listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on PetLifeRadio.com. Now, this is your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. This is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your pet-related business to a healthy six-figure per year income or more. Now, on today's show, I'm excited because we've got dog training marketing expert Molly Rouse with us, and she's going to share with us the psychology of sales. So if you hate sales or if you think you need to get better at sales, this is the show for you. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Your dog digs a hole under your fence, and the next thing you know... Protect your pets with Dig Defense, the amazing new product that keeps your pets in the yard. Dig Defense is safe, fast, and easy. Each unit is made from 4-gauge galvanized American steel and can be used for repairing digouts, filling gaps, or to hold fences down so pets can't get under them. Dig Defense provides peace of mind that your pets are contained humanely and safely. Visit digdefense.com today. D-I-G-D-E-F-E-N-C-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, well, thanks, and uh, welcome to the show. First off, let me give a big welcome to Molly Rouse. Molly, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Ty. I'm really happy to be here. Excellent. So before we get talking, uh, I want to talk to you about the psychology of sales. But before we do that, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, what you do. Give us a little bit of your story. Okay, that sounds great. Um, As you said, my name is Molly Rouse, and I'm a professional dog trainer. I'm the co-creator of the Marketing Blueprint for Dog Trainers and the founder of the website MakeItAsADogTrainer.com, which has a bunch of free videos just for dog trainers on marketing their business and really how to make it financially as a dog trainer, which is you know making a fantastic living working with dogs and doing something that we all love to do. I teach dog trainers who struggle with making enough to just train dogs for a living and would like to earn more in less time. And what separates me from other business coaches and marketing experts is that I only work with dog trainers because I am one. I've walked the walk. I've been in the trenches. I've struggled to make enough money and get enough clients and figure out what makes the difference and uh, have a great successful dog training business. So because of this, the dog trainers I help are able to save time and effort and pain trying to figure out the business side of training dogs. And so I teach practical and proven things about how to pull in more ideal clients, what to say and what not to say on your website and in your sales pitch, how to stand out next to the competition, how to make your ideal clients feel like that you're the only real option for them and things like that. So as a result, these trainers enjoy their businesses more and they're much more successful and a lot faster than they would on their own. Excellent. And it's part of that that uh, when I was introduced to you and to your website that really stood out to me. And that's what, you know, you call the psychology of sales. Get into that a little bit for me. What do you mean by the psychology of sales? Well, when you're going through a sales process with people, from the time they first contact you to the time they sign up, there's a lot of kind of emotional and psychological things that go on under the surface, especially for the person buying. You know, there's a saying that people like to buy, but they don't like to be sold to. So there's a lot of the psychological things that go into that that make them want to buy what you're offering, and but not really feel pressured or anything like that, making them want what you offer emotionally, but also later be able to justify how they felt emotionally about buying your services with the real facts about why you're the best choice. And it's also about getting trust, what makes people trust you and want to buy from you in terms of trusting you and liking you and that kind of thing. And then also the opportunity for you to present what you offer in a way that makes them feel like it's a benefit to them, that they're getting Mm -hmm. benefits from hearing about what you offer. Now, as you say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to that would say, okay, 
you know, that sounds great, you know, the, the sales part, but there's a lot of people that are frustrated by this whole process. What are some of the bigger frustrations that you see that, uh, that dog trainers or people in pet business, for that matter, have in the sales process? Well, there's really two big frustrations that people have. Number one is that a lot of people get into training dogs because they like training dogs, and that's one of the reasons they're looking into learning more about the business stuff or how to sell because they don't like to sell. They don't like, you know, the whole sales process is yucky to them, being a salesperson. And I don't, to be honest with you, I don't like being salesy either. I prefer being, you know, friendly and talkative and that kind of thing, but still kind of convincing in the sales process. So I have kind of like a real soft sales process. So I don't feel salesy and they don't feel like they're being sold to. Mm -hmm. And then Another frustration a lot of people have is that they seem to be able to sell pretty well once they get a prospect in front of them. Like they feel like their percentages are pretty high once they have someone in front of them, but they have trouble getting enough people in front of them either because they don't get enough inquiries or they don't get the opportunity enough to try to sell to each of the people who contact them. And even though getting more inquiries is a whole other subject, this will help them close the sale more often for people who do inquire and potentially for more money on average per client. So that alone will help with that struggle that a lot of entrepreneurs have in general. And then they can also focus on getting more inquiries after they get this process down to a science. Well, and then let's jump right into it then, because uh, like I say, I, when I was on your website the other day, I noticed you have this 15-step process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drag it out of you right now. I know that people uh, can go to your website and find it. I'm going to get it out of you right now. Yeah. And uh, for those that are listening, like I say, there's 15 steps here. They're all great. I would recommend that you pull out your pen and paper right now if you don't already have them because maybe all 15 are going to help you. If not, maybe just one or two are going to mean the difference between you know the closing rate where you've got it now and a higher closing rate, which is more money in your pocket. So so Molly, give us the first one. What's the first step in, in this? Uh, well, first off, do you have a, a name for this process? No, I kind of just call it the anatomy of a great sales process because they're all elements that are helpful in being able to have a complete sales process from start to finish, from the time someone first contacts you about your service services to the time that they purchase what you offer. So that's kind of just what I call it. But believe it or not, there's actually a step zero. <laughs> so okay. there's some, something that everybody has to do before they even get to the first step, which is, you know, someone has contacted them and what happens first. But there's something people have to decide first. But before I get into that, just going along with what you said, these 15 steps can be applied to any dog training business and really to any service business where you're trying to get clients for a service that you provide. But having a system for a sales process is really, really necessary because it helps you to have a plan in mind for what you're going to say and in what order. You know, all of this has been tried and proven and it's based on a lot of the psychology, like I said before, that has to do with what makes people make buying decisions. So definitely write down each step and go back later and figure out how you will apply each one to your specific business based on what you offer and a few other factors. So the step zero, actually, the first thing that someone has to do is to have a goal for what someone's next step would be after they contact you. So you have to figure this out first. What you know, The first goal, obviously, was you, you want to have the opportunity to do your sales pitch at some point in the future with each person mm -hmm. who contacts you. And it wouldn't necessarily be during that first phone call or anything like that because there are a few steps that come before an actual sales pitch before you actually get into what you do. But you want to know where you want to have that opportunity, either in person or on the phone during that first call when someone first calls you, either a video you're going to send them or an email that you're going to send them. You have to know kind of ideally where you want to have this conversation with people. Okay. And I personally like to do it in person because I feel like the more action someone is taking and the time that they're taking to invest in hearing what I have to say, they're more likely to continue following that path. And then they get to know me and I get a chance to explain things a bit more that really helps them see what makes us unique and what they can accomplish with our programs and things like that. But if they can't meet with me in person soon for whatever reason, they're too busy or something comes up, then I go ahead and email them all of the information and then talk to them on the phone again after that so that they after they've taken the time to review the information that they've requested from me about my services so that I can talk to them again. But I don't meet with them at their house. That involves no effort for them and a lot of effort for me. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll just want, you know, if you meet with someone at their house, they'll just want to talk your ear off about their dog or get some free advice from you if you mm -hmm. go meet with them at their home. So that's just the, the step zero is figure out your goal for okay. each person who contacts you. And then the real step one actually is the first thing that usually a lot of people mess up on in business is, and the first step is to listen to the person first. Okay. 
So, and so when we're talking about listening, and, I, and I'm not listening, I just interrupted, but no, go ahead. we're talking about <laughs> listening. You're talking about listening to the whole story. What about people that go off on tangents? What about people that are, give us a little bit more info on listening here. Yep. So basically what you would want to do is, you know, someone calls you about their dog and you can go ahead and have this first step right then. You can go ahead and listen to them, but get them started a little bit. A lot of people in every industry go through a sales process and they just start talking right away. Someone calls and says, hey, I'm calling about your dog training programs. And then they say, okay, great. So here are our programs and blah, blah, blah. This is our credentials and everything else. But the first thing you want to do is ask them to tell you about their dog, their goals and their issues. They do need a chance to express themselves and feel understood and you can ask questions to lead them and kind of keep them on track. So if they go rattling on and on about where they got their dog and all the dogs they've had before and, and how long they've had their dog and how much they love dogs and, and on and on and on and, and out of the point, <laughs> then you can say, so, you know, what are your goals and issues? What can I help you with? Do you need help, need help with any other behaviors? Do you need help getting them to listen if they get outside off leash? Do you have this behavior or that behavior? You know, just be really conversational and you have to talk like a regular person and ask them, mm -hmm. you know, ask them questions about try to figure out how it would affect their life if all of these things were addressed you know get them talking about their goals and issues and just ask them questions to keep them on track okay so we're listening to the client what's step two step two is to then reassure them and you want to kind of just real briefly be like okay that's no problem we can fix all of those things you don't want to really tell them how you fix all those things yet but you want to mention you know yes we see that all the time and that's definitely not a problem a lot of times at this step people you know dog trainers sometimes will go into you know trying to explain what the owner of the dog is doing wrong or start talking about credentials they start explaining things too much to try to reassure them about that you know what you're talking about and that you can help them but that's not really what they want to hear at this point what your potential client wants to hear at this point is just something to give them peace of mind that you you understand you know what they're going through and that you definitely can help them okay and so uh, we're reassuring them what's step three Step three is now you kind of want to tell them the opportunity, the next step that they have. So number three is opportunity. What you want them to do next, which would be meeting up with you or watching a video that you're going to send them or having them read an email that you're going to send them. Whatever you decided in step zero was what you wanted to do with them. And then you want to tell them also why that suggestion is the best one in terms of benefits to them. You want to say, you know, you want to explain why you want to meet with them in person so that they can get to know you and that they can ask you questions and why you might want them to come meet with you. And these options should be, again, the benefits for them, not for you. You don't want to say, I want you to come meet with me so I can hear about your dog and so that I can evaluate your dog and I can find out if you're mm -hmm. right for my programs. Not the benefits for you. You want to give them the opportunity to learn about what you do in a way that they feel like will benefit them. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. What if the next step is that the dog trainer wants to have a phone interview? Should they have them go through another step, say, okay, I want to schedule a time to have a phone interview. First, I want you to read this and fill out this form, or do you recommend someone goes right into it? I mean, do you have a preference that, uh, that you found to be better? Yeah, I've actually tried it both ways. And I do feel like that as far as if someone is at the point in their business where they need to really pre-qualify the people who are contacting them a little bit better because they're really busy and they're getting kind of burned out getting maybe clients that aren't really ideal for them or along those lines, then having them kind of go through more steps before you do more work as far as talking to them is definitely helpful. Having them read kind of a frequently asked questions page. I call it an interview with page, you know, so that they can mm -hmm. see the frequently asked questions in advance of having to go through all of the things that you have to say the same way to every person, having them read that stuff in advance will save a lot of time. So if, if a person is in their business and they're at the point where they really need to save time and improve their sales process, then having them do a little bit of back work before the phone interview or before meeting in person, that's great. If someone's more at the point where they really just need more business and they want to make the most out of every single person who contacts them, then maybe just skip the extra work and go straight into the rest of the steps during that first conversation. If they want to just make sure they don't miss the opportunity with each individual person who contacts them. Excellent. And so to recap for those that are listening, it sounds like if you're in a position where you can turn away business, give them some extra steps. Or if you're in a position where you've got to get all the business you can, perhaps just launch right into it right there. That's what I'm hearing, right? Right, exactly. Okay, excellent. Now, of course, you know, maybe you do need a lot of business, but your the next step in your protocol is to get them in for an evaluation. Then, of course, you would do that. But, uh, but yeah, you know, going off of uh, what I was asking previously, if you like to do it by phone, there's a couple ways to do that. Excellent. So what's on to the next step? Is this step 
step four we're going on to? Yep, this is step four. And step four is to talk about the results and the benefits of what you offer. And this kind of starts at that sales pitch point. This is when you're now talking to them. They're either in front of you or you're on the phone with them and you're starting your sales pitch, quote unquote. And you're not going to be telling them how you do anything yet. And you're not talking, don't get this confused with talking about the features of what you do. The features might be what's included in your programs. Right now, you're just talking about the benefits, what they can expect from what you do as far as the end results. This goes back to kind of reassuring them that you can do what they need and you can reach all of their goals. So you talk about the results and the benefits of your services at this point. Okay. And so do you have a way of distinguishing between features and benefits? Yeah. uh, One example that I've heard lots of times is like an airbag and a car. So if you talk about the feature of an airbag, the feature would be, you know, the airbag deploys if you have a head-on collision. The benefit of it is that it saves your life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really struggle a lot with seeing the difference between a feature and a benefit. A lot of times when I'm helping a dog trainer write their programs, for example, I'll say, okay, what's the benefit of this program? And they'll say, well, the dog learns this command and this command and this command. And that's not really the benefits. Those are the features. They get the commands. The benefits Mm -hmm. might be something like, you know, the dog stops embarrassing them when they have guests come over, you know, because they're not jumping on the guest. Or the benefit might be there's so much more peace in their house because the dog isn't barking nonstop all day long. Those are the benefits. The features are like the commands like off and quiet, you know, so that's the difference. Excellent. You know, we describe it a very similar way. You know, a feature would be the dog does a downstay. A benefit is somebody rings your doorbell and now the dog is going to lie down calmly while the person walks in the door and, you know, it kind of paints a picture for them versus just giving them uh, something to check off. That, that's kind of how we, we describe it. Okay. Awesome. Let's keep moving on. What's your next step? The next step at this point, you kind of want to give them, even if it's just real brief, more reassurance in the form of proof which would be testimonials, mentioning that you have worked with lots of families with the same problems and that you have lots of references if they need them, or some kind of promise or guarantee, some kind of proof that gives them more reassurance that you're not just saying this, that you definitely can help. And that maybe they've tried some training in the past that hasn't worked, and maybe you're telling them this time why it's different or what's different and why. And, you know, one thing I always mention to my students, the dog trainers that I help, is that if you are finding that you're meeting with a lot of people who need something that you don't necessarily know how to provide, then they're not your ideal client. You can move on from there or go out and learn how to do more things. So, for example, if you don't know how to do more than what they've already tried, they're not your ideal client. Go learn how to do more things, like maybe if a lot of the people who are coming to you really need help with, you know, reliability off-leash or something like that, and you're not real sure how to accomplish that the way they need, then be authentic and transparent about that and just, you know, refer them off to another dog trainer or go learn how to do that kind of work. So that's another thing here is that you want to give them the reassurance, but you want to be really honest about it in terms of the proof of what you can provide. Excellent. Excellent. How many steps is that? I'm losing count here. No, that's fine. This is step number five. (laughs) Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break Uh, When we come back, we're going to push through these last 10 steps. And again, folks, make sure you're taking notes here. I'm taking some notes here because there's certain things that I know that we can improve in our uh, our sales process. And this is great stuff. So we're going to come back with Molly Rouse and uh, stay right with us. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Petco, where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get six dollars off your order of sixty dollars or more, and up to forty percent off the entire Petco site. That's right, but that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of forty nine dollars or more. Six dollars off, up to forty percent off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco, where the pets go. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. 
In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Werber from Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. We want to hear from you. Listen in. We're on every Thursday, 1 o'clock Pacific Time, 4 o'clock Eastern Time here on PetLifeRadio.com. We are one of the only live shows on Pet Life Radio, and I'm here to answer your questions. You can call in at 877-385-8882, or you can drop me an email to drjeff at PetLifeRadio.com, and hopefully we'll see you here on Thursdays. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and we're back and we're with Molly Rouse. Now, Molly is giving us a step by step. She's giving us gold nuggets here, folks. Step by step how to take the anatomy of a sale, dissect it down to something that anyone can do. Let's get through them, uh, and I apologize. I'm interrupting quite a bit here and taking a lot of your time. So let's get going with step number six. Oh, that's fine. It's uh, step number six, and this is, again, after listening to them, reassuring them, meeting with them either on the phone or in person, and then explaining the results and the benefits of what you do and giving them some kind of proof. Step number six would be now you talk about how you do what you do, which is your training method, and you want to contrast that with other options out there. So, for example, if you use a certain training method and you know that for their goals that it's going to work better than other training methods they'll come across, then at this point you'll say, this is how these training methods work and these are the limitations you'll face but on the other hand this is the training method we use and it covers those limitations while still having the benefits of the other training methods so this is where you explain exactly how you do what you do and this is a step a lot of dog trainers miss entirely they don't explain what they do they just say this is the tool we use and leave Mm -hmm. it at that or they just explain it real kind of coldly and don't really get into the benefits of why that training method is the best one for them and exactly how it works people like to know the how and they like to understand understand the process of why their goals are going to be reached this way. So this is the step where you explain that. That's a good point because if you're promising them the world and saying, yeah, we can fix this. Look, we fix it for other people, but then you're not sharing with them how, I could think a lot of people would be skeptical if they're not getting to step six. Absolutely. Okay. What's step seven? Step number seven is now you get to that point that you're going to be tempted to jump to earlier, and this is where you talk about the features, which would be your programs. And again, Mm -hmm. you don't get this confused with the benefits. The benefits is the end result of what you can accomplish. The features now is what your programs are like, how they're set up, what's included in them, the number of lessons, where the lessons are, the number of commands. Those are the features. So now you talk about your programs in that way. Okay. And then, uh, so this is not, hey, your dog is going to be so much better. This is basically, you're going to get three sessions, you're going to get a group class, you're going to get a leash, you're going to get a collar, the features, right? Right, exactly. And what I like to do is at this point, I will tell them that I have a kind of an outline of my programs written out for them. And I'll, and if they're meeting with me in person, I'll hand them a paper and say, this explains how the programs work. And I'll outline for them briefly before they even read it, what the biggest differences are between the programs. And it doesn't have the prices on there yet. It just has the descriptions. It has the benefits listed briefly, again, for each program. And then also the features listed, the number of commands, number of lessons, all of that stuff. So they can see it all side by side and they can and look at it and kind of start to get an idea of which one they're more leaning toward. So okay, this is excellent. just what I do because I like to offer a lot of options for each client so they can choose the one they want. But that's how I do that. Excellent. Okay. Moving on. What's the next step? Step number eight is what I call price juxtaposition, which is basically juxtaposition just means having something side by side to compare. And this mm-hmm. is where you explain your prices and the context with why they are worth that. You don't give the prices yet. 
but you explain why your prices are worth what, what you're going to be telling them they are or compared with other options. So you're justifying your price and contrasting it with the other options that will end up costing them more time and money in the long run. So even if you do charge more than other options that are out there locally, you want to explain, you know, why your, your program prices, uh, why the programs, the way they're set up are better for them because they, you know, maybe they actually work. <laughs> They save mm -hmm. them time. They save them money in the long run. This is a real quick step, but just real briefly say, you know, other programs, the way they're set up, you might not know how much you'll end up spending in the end because you'll have to do a whole bunch of programs back to back, basic and then an advanced and so on. And you don't know how much it's going to cost. And it might be a much huger investment. And you don't know if it's even going to work with our programs. You know, it's going to work. You know, this is the last investment you'll ever make. It'll be cheaper for you in the long run. Just some kind of contrast so that they can see side by side the context of why you're prices are worth it. Awesome. Awesome. You know, at my company, we call this comparing apples to oranges because hopefully by this point, you've shown them there is no other program that's like ours. So apples to oranges. And so it makes sense that ours is going to be on a different price. Is that kind of what you're getting at as well? Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. Okay. What's next in your process here? Step number nine is now you talk to them a little bit about how your prices work, what's included in them, the different bonuses you have, different discounts you have going on or incentives that you have for certain things, certain time frames, you know, anything like that, what's included, any guarantees you have. So you're just kind of explaining a little bit about how your prices work. Okay. How would you do that? I mean, give us a quick little example. Like for example, if there's uh, an equipment that's included in your programs and you explain that when you were talking about how your training method works, then you might say, just so you know, this is how the prices work. This training equipment is included, so you don't have to go buy that separately. It's already part of the price and it retails for this much money. And we have this discount going on right now if you start by the end of you know September. You know, things like that. So you just kind of explain this is what's included in the prices. So when you tell them the prices, they already know all that stuff already so that when you give them the prices then you don't have to continue explaining at that point they already know all that so that when you hand them the prices you don't have to go through how it works you can just let them see the prices and, and go from there brilliant that makes sense okay what's our next step the next step is then you give them the prices. And if you're meeting with them in person, you can either have a sheet that has a summary of each of your program features and then has the prices next to it and then has the information about what's included in the prices and discounts and things like that also listed on that same paper. Everything you already just explained, you give that to them with the prices on it or you can just verbally tell them the prices. Like for example, if you're talking to them on the phone. Okay. And that sounds pretty straightforward. What's our next step? Step number 11 is the hardest one, I think, for a lot of people, but it's the shortest thing to do. It just takes some practice. And number 11 is to shut up. <laughs> you have to stop talking. So after you give them the prices, they have to go through this mental process where they're justifying in their own minds why you're worth that and why they should spend it. And if you keep talking while they're doing that, like explaining how your prices work, for example, if you didn't do that first in step nine, then you're going to be talking over when they're trying to think and you're going to end up talking them out of it, especially if you feel kind of uncomfortable about your prices. Maybe you just raised your prices or you're new at training dogs or new in business. You'll start backpedaling them and start telling them cheaper options and almost talking yourself out of the sale. So shutting up will help you feel more confident and seem more confident even if you're not, and it will give them a chance to go through that thought process and justify why they should spend that and how they can work it into their budget. So you give them the prices, you hand them the paper, or you tell them the prices, and you stop talking. Don't say another word until they start talking again. <laughs> this is smart. I've screwed that up many, many times. That's good <laughs> advice. What's our next step? Step number 12 is now you'll you'll go through answering their questions. So you, you stop talking and then you wait for them to make the next move. And usually they'll start the next sentence with, okay, and then they'll start asking questions or they'll say, so when can we get started? Or they'll tell you their uh, decision or something along those lines. So you wait for them to start asking questions. You answer their questions and then you might want to continue leading the conversation after they've started talking with asking them hypothetically which program they're possibly leaning toward and when they might like to get started. Just kind of hypothetically and you can say hypothetically hypothetically that helps take the pressure off of them so that mm -hmm. they can talk without feeling like you're you're pinning them down to a decision right then okay and then uh, what's next step number 13 Yep. Step number 13 is now you give them some kind of urgency and you tell them the availability. So the urgency might be a possible waiting list or it might be a discount that they can get if they get their enrollment form in by a certain date. Even if you're vague in this area, if you're like, well, we're pretty flexible by, right now, but definitely get your deposit in as soon as possible so you can get the next space in line, you know, or something Excellent. along those lines. So you give them urgency and availability. 
Yeah, I mean, this is the old infomercial trick, you know, uh, act now because of this. Now, of course, we're not going to do it in a cheesy way like on right. the infomercial, but <laughs> it obviously works. They keep putting on an infomercials, and so giving some scarcity is a great idea, right? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Giving them an idea that, you know, if they know that they want to sign up for a program, even if they're still deciding which one, that's what I always say, even if you're still deciding which program to do, if you know you're going to do one of them, get your enrollment form and a deposit in as soon as possible so you would be next in line after you decide which program you want to choose. Excellent, excellent. Because, yeah, a lot of people, they're more pushed to, to act if they know that the opportunity is going to be taken away from them or if the price is going to go up. So that's a brilliant step. Okay, are we on to number 14? Yep, number 14 is kind of an optional one. You can give them a surprise bonus maybe for some kind of incentive, such as maybe to get them to sign up on the spot. You give them a free gift or an extra bonus or an extra discount and say, oh, by the way, if you definitely know you want to sign up, I'll give you this free gift if you'd like to go ahead and fill out your enrollment form while you're here or today or by the end of the day or by the end of tomorrow or give, give them some kind of time frame or a surprise bonus for doing something that you would like them to do. Have you found a, a certain gift that tends to work better than others for your business at least? Well, for my business personally, I have the advantage of, of my husband having a photography background. So one of our programs includes a portrait of their dog. So as we're training their dog and their dog <laughs> can get to the point where they're sitting still and be mm -hmm. calm, we can take a nice picture of them and have it framed and give it to them. A lot of people really like that. So a lot of times I'll say, by the way, if you are able to get your enrollment form in by this period of time or whatever, I'll go ahead and give you that portrait with any of the programs or something like that. So it could be something that's not really training related or just a little extra bonus. But another thing that also works really well is just a, another really small discount. It can just be something small so they, again, they don't feel pressured, but it gives them a little bit of extra incentive if they're on the fence. Gotcha. You know, uh, as you said that, I, I got to thinking, we've done some shows about joint ventures, and that would be a perfect way to get into a joint venture. Maybe it was a photography person, maybe it was someone else, but, you know, maybe you could get a, a coupon for a free sitting with a photographer, and then it's the photographer's job to, you know, maybe upsell them into a package so that, you know, they make their money or something like that. But, you know, it could be a photographer, it could be any sort of uh, service type thing. You know, perhaps that's a way to, to get involved with a joint venture with another company. Yes, absolutely. That's a great idea. Or it could just be one of the features that's an extra bonus in one of your bigger programs. You could say, I'll give you this bonus that's in this program with any of the programs if you do this. You gotcha. know, so, so you just kind of upgrade them kind of for free to a particular feature in one of your other programs. Okay. Now, I know we've hammered through a few of these because of time constraints. I was worried about getting all of it done in, in about a half hour. And we're coming up against the half hour. We've got one more step. Why don't you lay yep. it on us? Step number five is then, of course, you close the sale right then if they want to, or you do what I call bookending, which means you plan a time to follow up with them. You have to follow up with them. It gives you a chance to address objections and you know, also just to kind of check in with them. So if they say they need time to think about it, tell them that's absolutely fine and ask them if you can schedule a time a few days later for you to just check in with them to see if they have any other questions. Scheduling that will help keep you from, they won't be surprised when you call to follow up. They won't feel pressured. They're expecting it in advance. Awesome. Like I say, this has been some great information. I was thinking about my sales process the whole time that you were speaking and recognizing a few steps that I haven't been doing, you know, that I can definitely insert into our own sales process. And it's got a very natural flow to take somebody that's interested and build some desire and, and uh, help them understand how you can help them and, and get them to close as soon as possible. This is a great system. Thank you. Um, if people want to learn more about this system, if people want to get more information about you and what you can do to help other dog trainers, how do they get in touch with you? Well, our website is makeitasadogtrainer.com and they can go on there and just watch some of the free videos or feel free to email me at molly at makeitasadogtrainer.com. Any of those ways are great. Excellent. Molly, thank you so much for being on the show today. This has been some great information. Thank you so much. It was really fun. I was glad to be here. Awesome. Well, a big thank you to Molly and thank you to those who are listening to Six Figure Dog Business on PetLifeRadio.com. Make sure to visit PetLifeRadio.com and click on Six Figure Dog Business to listen to all of our shows. I'll talk to you guys soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.